All right, thank you guys so much for coming with me to do this live workout together. I'm really excited to have you all here um, and to work out together. So all you're gonna need is yourself, some space and some optional equipment that we will talk about later. Um, but I think the question on everyone's mind is really, is it even possible to build muscle from home? Especially with quarantine, a lot of us haven't been able to work out in the way that we normally would. I know for me, my routine was totally disrupted, um, but no worries, I'm here to tell you that it is totally possible to build muscle from home. So to understand that it's important to talk about how muscle is built in the first place. So I'll use the example of a bicep curl. Let's say I've got a dumbbell and I'm doing some curls, right? At some point, I'm gonna reach a fatigued point where my muscles sort of give out and I just can't lift uh, the dumbbell any longer. What's actually happening when I push my muscle to that point is that there are a lot of little tiny fibers in my muscles and they're actually um, getting tiny little tears in them. And then what's gonna happen when I stop lifting, when I'm recovering, right? When I'm sleeping, eating, resting, whatever, what's gonna happen is some cells are gonna come to those muscle fibers and they're gonna sort of patch them up. And when they patch them up, a lot of times they'll, they'll fuse some of those fibers together and they'll actually make them grow bigger. So that's how muscle grows bigger. So essentially it's totally possible to cause those little tears at home. You just need to push your muscle hard enough, which is definitely possible. Um, one thing I will note is it's definitely easier to cause that muscle tear from home if you're more of a beginner. So I'm a little bit more of an advanced lifter. So for me, it could be a little bit harder to build muscle from home, but still not impossible. But if you're a beginner, um, you're totally primed to challenge those muscles and build um, muscle from home. And we will have advanced and beginner modifications for every move that we do today. So no matter what skill level you are at, we have something for you. Um, the other thing to note is that we're gonna be doing a full body body weight workout today. So there's a lot of workout splits that exist for gym goers. Um, I don't know if you've heard of like old school bodybuilding splits where they did like one shoulder day, one arm day, one chest day, one back day, one leg day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's fine and it worked for a lot of them, but um, recent research has actually shown that the more times, the more frequently you hit a muscle per week, um, the more you're likely to induce some growth. So the more likely it is to grow. So in our case, if we're gonna do body weight beginner workouts, a really good split to do can just be full body three times a week. And that way you're definitely hitting every muscle at least like twice a week, um, which will provide really good stimulus for growth. So that brings us to today's workout and um, all you'll need is some space. And then we have some optional things to sort of add some extra intensity. So one thing you will need is either socks or a towel for one of the moves. Um, optionally, you'll need a chair. And then you can also have some heavy stuff to add some weight to some of these moves. So for some of the moves, you'll see me performing them with dumbbells, but totally no worries if you don't have dumbbells, you can use anything from home. So some options are some heavy textbooks. Um, you can take a backpack and put those heavy textbooks in it and then wear the backpack. You can take a water bottle and fill it up with water or sand. Anything heavy you have on hand goes. Um, don't worry about it too much. Like we're just trying to add some extra weight here uh, to some of these moves if you want. So you definitely don't need dumbbells or anything like that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna get into is our warm up, and I've got my phone here for time and purposes. Um, this is just a really quick warm up to get our heart rate up a little bit. We're not gonna kill ourselves here. We're not gonna go crazy. We just wanna get that blood pumping a little bit. We wanna break a light sweat. This is gonna make sure that we're warm and that our muscles are warm, which is gonna reduce the risk for injury. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate some of the moves right now. The first move is gonna be a jumping jack. You guys have already all probably done this before. Very simple move, and I'll show it from here. All right, the next move will be high knees. So a nice cue I like to use for this, if you don't know how high to um, raise your knees, is just extend your arms so that your elbow is making a 90 degree angle, and then just slap your palms with your thighs. That's gonna look something like this. All right, our next move will be a jump squat. So you're just gonna perform a normal squat, have your feet about hip width apart, whatever is comfortable for you. And you're gonna squat down to about parallel, whatever is comfortable for you with a neutral back. And then you're gonna jump up as high as you can. So that for me will look something like this. All right, and then we will do a bow and bend. This is just a nice little move to get some flexibility going, some blood flowing. So I'm gonna reach up to the sky as far back as I can. And then I'm gonna bend down to my toes. I'm not locking up my knees, I'm keeping them nice and soft um, so that I'm not injuring anything. So in terms of the actual timing for this, we're gonna be doing every move for 30 seconds and just a 10 second rest. That is very short, but we're just trying to get the heart rate up here. So um, we will get started with that in just about five seconds. In three, two, one, we're gonna do our jumping jacks. So again, go at your own pace here. You don't have to match me. I'm not gonna go too quick. Just enough to get me nice and warmed up. And it is only 30 seconds, so this is gonna go by pretty quickly. 
We got like 10 seconds left. And make sure you're breathing. I think ooh, a lot of times you can sort of subconsciously hold our breath, which you don't want to do. All right, quick 10 second rest. And then we're going to get into our high knees. Wow, 10 seconds is very short. <laughs> All right, ready? And high knees. And if you see me glancing over here, I'm just keeping an eye on our time. So you can see, I'm just raising them to about the level of my palms. And you can hear my breath that my heart rate is already picking up, which is exactly what we want. And done. Okay, next is our jump squats. So that's gonna be our last sort of like cardio move for this warm up. In three, two, one. So again, I'm just squatting down to just about parallel. Feel free to do whatever you want with your hands. I'm sort of pushing the ground down. Let me just check on our time. Now I'm not jumping super high. If you can jump higher than me, absolutely be my guest. And done with that. And our last move is gonna be that bow and bend. Just that five seconds. Now I'm not super flexible, so if you're more flexible than me, definitely bend a little bit further. But you don't need to push yourself like crazy. We're just trying to get some blood flow to all our muscles. We'll just check in our time. All right. So that brings us to our first move. Hopefully your heart rate is up a little bit. You can tell that mine is. I'm breathing a little heavier. So I'll just catch my breath for a second so I can explain this to you guys. So our first move is going to be for the quads. And it's a move a lot of you are probably familiar with. And it is just a body weight squat. So Everyone's form is going to be slightly different on this, but I have some general pointers that I can give you. So generally, your feet want to be about hip width apart. For some people, this will vary. I put mine a little bit wider than hip width apart. Um, a good way to test this is just to jump normally. And whenever your feet land, that's a pretty good position. But I do put mine a little bit wider. So your hands can be wherever you want them. I'll just put them sort of at my chest right here. And then I know a lot of people who teach the squat like to say, pretend you're sitting back into a chair. I don't love that advice because I think it tends to make people sort of bend out too much. I like to think about bending the crease of the hip and the crease of the knee at the same time. So I'm keeping my back neutral, my gaze forward, and then I'm bending those at the same time. It's going to look something like that. And one other thing to note is in terms of depth, I'm just trying to go to right about 90 degrees or parallel. You can go a little bit deeper, a little bit up, whatever feels comfortable. Just don't push that depth too much. Like I don't want you guys going like this and like rounding over, just go to wherever you can keep good form. So like that. All right. Now for substitutions for a beginner, if you want to make this slightly easier, we can perform what's called a wall sit. So you're going to get in that basic squat position, same depth, and just get up against a wall and just squat down and hold. You're going to feel that burning in your quads pretty quick. So if you want it to be something in between a bodyweight squat and a wall sit, you can just add a textbook or some weight onto your thighs right here. Then in terms of our beginning modification, you can do the exact same move as a bodyweight squat, but just with a weight. So if I'm holding one weight, I like to hold it like a goblet like this, and then it's gonna be the exact same form. Ooh. Just like that. All right, so whichever variation you want, pick now, and we're gonna be doing three sets of 10 reps with about a minute's rest in between. And we'll get started with that in just about 10 seconds. So get your weights if you need them, get a wall if you need, and we'll get started in just about five seconds. I will be going for the dumbbell squat here. And ready? Begin. Again, don't worry too much about your pace. If it's a little slower than mine or faster. All right. One set down. That's about right. So now I'm going to let us 
have about a minute's rest, about a minute's rest, sorry. And then we're gonna get going with our second set. All right, so one thing you might notice is that I'm actually barefoot right now or I'm in socks. Some of you might think that if you're gonna work out, um, it's a good idea to have like running shoes on because we generally work out with running shoes. But for lifting workouts, I would actually advise you not to wear running shoes because they have sort of a spongy heel and that can throw your balance off a little bit. What you want is to have your foot sort of rooted into the ground at all points. So you don't want your toes coming up, you don't want your heels coming up, you want power through the entire foot. So what I generally tell people is, if you have running shoes, ditch them and just go barefoot or in socks. Or if you have some nice flat shoes like I have here, those work perfectly. So a lot of the times I will lift in trucks, in Converse, um, or just in vans. It doesn't have to be fancy, but just a nice flat shoe will do the job. That'll give you a nice stable base that we want. All right, we're gonna get started in about five seconds with our second set. All right, in three, two, one. That back nice and neutral. You can think about spreading the floor with your heels. All right. Whew. Just one set to go on that one. Again, we're gonna go for about a minute's rest here. Just to catch our breath a little bit. So I know squats, um, especially barbell squats, can sort of be the scariest lift for a lot of people. They definitely were for me when I started lifting. I remember for some reason, deadlift didn't scare me that much. Benching didn't scare me, but barbell squats terrified me. So what I actually ended up having to do one day is I just went to the gym and I got in the power rack. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen a power rack. I've got one right here. And sometimes there are these safety bars attached to the bottom that will catch the bar if you fall. So what I did is I just got under the barbell in a squat position and I intentionally squatted and failed. So I let the barbell drop onto the safety pins. And for some reason, that was all it took to sort of break that mental barrier I had. So once I intentionally failed, I wasn't scared of squats anymore. So I think we can learn a lot from lifting about pushing ourselves, but one important lesson is sometimes failure is okay and even necessary to making progress. And with that, we are gonna hit our last set in three, two, one. All right, great job you guys. That is our quad move done. And now we're going to move on to a hamstring move. So what we're actually gonna do is a move where we're gonna be laying down on the ground. And this is a really cool substitute for a hamstring curl on a machine. I don't know how many of you guys have seen sort of the hamstring curl machine at the gym. This is a great substitute for that. So this is where you're gonna need either socks or a towel. I'm just gonna go with my socks here and I'm gonna lie down on the ground in a position very similar to a sit up. So my back is going to be flat and my knees are going to be raised like this, all right? Once I'm comfortable here, I'm just going to raise up onto a bridge position. And now here I'm actually going to intentionally focus all my weight in my heels. So I'm lifting my toes up. And then all I'm gonna do is while keeping my hips up, I'm going to extend my legs all the way out and then back in. So that's gonna look a little bit like this. All right, now admittedly, this is a pretty hard move. It took me a while to master. So a nice substitute to make this a little bit easier is to do the exact same move, but just single-legged. So again, same thing, but you're just gonna take one leg and raise it up and move it out and back in. All right, and then you'll repeat for the same reps on the other side, okay? Then if the first move happens to be too easy for you, we're not actually gonna change the movement itself, but we're gonna change the timing to make it a little bit harder. So if you need a more advanced modification, same exact beginning position, but you're gonna slow down the eccentric and the extension of the legs to a three second count, all right? So that's gonna look like one, two, three, in. One, two, three, in. And basically what that does for you is it increases the time under tension, which is basically another way to induce stress on your muscles and make the movement harder. So in terms of our uh, rep scheme for this, we can do anywhere from three three sets of about six to eight reps. I'll probably go on the eight rep range because I'm doing just the normal modification. But again, if you're new to this movement, feel free to go all the way down to four reps. Um, if you feel like this is really easy for you, go up to eight. Um, but I'm gonna work on a modification that lets me hit about that eight rep range. So if eight feels way too easy for you, maybe go up to the advanced move. 
If it feels way too hard, maybe scale down to the beginner. So we are going to start that in just about five seconds. So get ready, raise into that bridge, and let's get started. I'm trying to keep my tempo pretty much the same. And I'm trying to extend both legs out at the same time. Whew. All right, that is our one set down. We've got two to go. And again, we're gonna rest for about a minute here. So I'm definitely starting to feel my hamstrings burning a little bit, especially because I actually did a hamstring workout yesterday. Um, one really interesting thing is, I know a lot of us have probably heard the lactic acid myth that um, our muscles burn during a workout because lactic acid is building up. I actually just recently read that scientists don't know why our muscles burn during a workout, but it's not actually due to lactic acid buildup. So if you are on your rest period, let me know in the chat. Have you heard that muscles burn because of lactic acid? And if so, did you know that it was a myth? Because I had no idea. And I've been saying that for like years now. So I feel a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> All right. We're going to give ourselves about another 10 seconds. And then we're going to go again. Remember, if you started with one variation, but you want to go easier or go harder, feel free. Just adjust, it, adjust this to your skill level. And get ready, set, go. And really be mindful about those hips because they have a tendency to sag down. That makes the move a little bit easier. So try to keep a straight line from your hips to your knees. All right. Whew. Okay, so we're gonna rest for about another minute here again. And then we will do our last set. And then we will be done with legs for the day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Leg movements are definitely the hardest for me. I feel like they get my heart rate up way more than upper body. Um, but I actually think I enjoy leg workouts more than I do upper body workouts. If you guys have ever done just like a pure upper body workout or a pure lower body workout, is there one that you prefer? I feel like I always dread leg days so much more. But once I'm in the gym and, and you know, squatting or deadlifting or whatever, I feel so much stronger. Especially because I can lift much heavier weights um, on lower body moves than I can upper body, which is something I'm working on. So let me know what you guys prefer. Maybe after we do some of the upper body movements later in the workout, you can tell me what you preferred. But definitely if you guys do any sports like soccer or basketball, you probably have really strong hamstrings and quads. So maybe you will prefer leg movements. I never did any sports. The extent of my soccer experience was getting sent to sports summer camp, which I... <laughs> All right, we're gonna hit our last set here in five. Four, three, two, one. I love this move just because it's so simple. It shows that you really don't need any equipment to get a really great workout in. I mean, everyone has socks or a towel. Whew, okay, so that was our last set. Hopefully those hamstrings are burning. We are done with legs for now, and we are going to move on to upper body. And we're gonna do another move that you guys probably are all pretty familiar with, the push-up. But I do have some form tips and tricks here to help you guys out. So for our push-ups, um, essentially we're gonna get up into a plank position. Let me just make sure I've got some room here to do this. One big push-up mistake that I see a lot is when people do the movement and they put their hands down, they sort of flare their elbows out and they go like this. Okay, now that's not inherently bad but it does put your elbows and your shoulders at risk a little bit so really easy fix for that if your hands are like this when you start to do your push-up all you want to do is think about internally rotating those wrists so instead of being here you're just gonna push here you should feel your chest activating when you do that you're just gonna bring those thumbs up and that should make sure that your elbows are getting tucked in when you do the move rather than flaring out other than that um pretty traditional form um you just want to make sure you have a straight line from the crown of your head to your toes and that is gonna look kind of like this. Oh, and in terms of depth, you want your chest to go almost down to the ground. It doesn't really have to touch the ground, but you wanna go until you're making about a 90 degree angle um, in your elbow joint. So that's gonna look something like, I might actually move these dumbbells out of the way. That's gonna look something like this. All right, now, in terms of modifications, if you wanna take a little bit of the weight off, you can just perform this movement on your knees, but the exact same form cues will apply. So again, straight line from your knees now to your, the crown of your head and press down. And my shoulders are just about stacked over my wrists. Now, if you want a harder variation, 
This move is pretty hard for me even, so I will definitely be sticking to the normal variation. But you can actually elevate your feet onto some surface and then do the push-ups. So I'll show you what that looks like. If you have any bench or chair here, you can use that to do this. But again, same form with our wrists and shoulders. You're just gonna elevate those feet. And do like that. So I will definitely be sticking with a normal variation. And in terms of our reps, we're going to be doing what's called an AMRAP or as many reps as possible. So when I say as many reps as possible, I don't mean go until you're literally face planting onto the floor. I don't want you getting hurt, but I want you to push yourself until you basically get to that rep where you do that rep and you're like, whoa, like I don't think I had another one in me. That's right at the point where I want you to be at. So um, that could basically look like getting to one rep where you're really, really pushing on that last rep and your form breaks down a little bit, stop there, okay? We don't wanna push further than that, but we do wanna push to that point where we're really getting to what we call technical failure, which is where your form is starting to break down. This is a really good way to add some intensity to a body weight movement. Um, rather than adding weight, we're just pushing the rep count until it's really, really hard for us. So everyone's AMRAP will look different, um, but do try to keep track of the numbers just so you can challenge yourself to beat your own numbers. So we'll get started with that first set in about 10 seconds. Get ready for that. In five, four, three, two, and one. So I can tell it's getting harder for me because I'm slowing down a little. I feel like I got a few more in me. Okay, so as you can see, I didn't actually fall down or anything, but I could tell that if I did one more, it was gonna be a real grind. So that's where I'm gonna stop. So like I said, the AMRAP technique is really great just to cause a little bit extra stimulus, a little bit more of a challenge. I would not do AMRAPs on every single set of every single exercise. Um, for example, I would not do like three AMRAP sets of squats, because that can be pretty dangerous if you're a beginner especially and you don't know exactly where your failure point is and then you try to do a set of squats to failure and you end up falling. But on something like this where there's no real risk of injuring yourself, um, it can be really good to just push yourself to limits and push yourself beyond what you thought you were capable of. So maybe you thought you could only do 10 push-ups, but suddenly you really try to push yourself to that failure point and you realize, whoa, I can do like 15 or 20. I actually didn't take my own advice and I forgot to count my first set, but I will count my second set for you. If you're curious to see how many I get, I'm a little curious. So we're gonna go in set three, two, one. A little closer to dumbbell. Definitely two, definitely a little slower on this set. <laughs> All right, so I got, I think, 16 on that set, which I didn't actually end up counting my first set. I forgot to, but I can tell you for sure that <laughs> my second set was less, less reps. And this is definitely nothing to worry about. Um, essentially, when we do our first set, right, we haven't worked our chest at all. So we're completely fresh. We have all of our energy potential stored in our chest muscles. But then once I start my second set, right, I've already pushed my chest muscles pretty hard on that first set. I've pushed them to failure. So on that second set, I'm coming in what we call pre-fatigued. So it's totally normal to see if you're doing three AMRAP sets, let's say the first set you get like 20, second set you get like 16, and maybe the third set you only get like 12. It doesn't mean you're getting worse or weaker or anything. It just means you're pushing yourself. It's actually a good sign so i don't sweat it too much but i do try to challenge myself to really get to that point where i can just barely do the last rep as long as you're doing that on every set you're golden so let's do like another set in like three seconds and i'll count this one too oh man crazy how much harder it gets. <laughs> All right, so like you can see, I only got 12 on that one, but I'm very happy with that still because I know I pushed myself right to the point where I couldn't do anymore. That's all you need for muscle growth. So our last move is going to be a move 
for our abs, for our core. And we're just gonna do a simple plank. So as long as you can hit proper form on a push up, you're golden for planking. So for planks and for abs in general, I think when a lot of people hear abs, they think about like this bikini body, washboard abs. Um, and I mean, that's fine, but your core is a lot more than your abs. Your core is actually composed of your abs, right? Your abdominals, but also your obliques, these side muscles and your trunk, which is found in the back. And your abs are not there just to look good, right? Your abs basically stabilize you in every single movement you do in life. So if you're lifting your legs to walk up the stairs, your abs are stabilizing you. If you're jogging, your abs are stabilizing you. If you're bending over to pick something up, your abs are at work. So it's super important to train the core to be stable in all of your lifts and in all of daily life. So for a plank, our normal variation is just a forearm plank. Very simple here. I'm just gonna go onto my forearms and keep a straight line from the head to the toes. So the important thing here is not to sag your hips like this and you don't wanna have them up like that. You just want a nice flat line. Like your back should pretty much look like a flat board. So a slightly easier variation is to just go up onto your wrist, onto your hands and do a plank raised up like this. Same exact setup. Wrists are stacked beneath the shoulder. And again, my hips are flat. They're not sagging down. They're not lifting up. And a harder variation is actually to do a plank pull through. So for this, you're gonna be up on your wrists and you're just gonna be pulling the weight across from you while trying to move your hips as little as possible. This is going to get some nice oblique involvement in the movement. Okay, now in terms of our time, we're gonna do about three sets of 30 to 45 seconds. Again, use your own sort of, use your body as your basis for your timing. I might go up to 45 seconds, but if at 30 you feel like you're really, really shaking and it's really hard, stick with 30, no biggie. And we'll get started with that in just about five seconds. So ready and go. And I've got my watch here. So again, I'm really focusing on keeping that weight balanced within my entire body. I wanna feel like I'm pushing through my elbows a little bit, pushing through my toes, and really stable in that core. I always say nothing makes time go by slower than planking. 45 seconds of planking feels like three hours of doing something else. So I'm trying to adjust as little as possible and just stay super stable. All right, that is our first set. Two more to go. I might actually go ahead and do a pull through on my next few sets because that set felt really great. So again, that's sort of how you just, just listen to your body and listen to how it sounds. I'm feeling like that went really well and like I can bump up the intensity, intensity a little bit. So I will be, but listen to your body, of course. And again, if you're wondering why we're sort of taking minute long rests between every um, exercise, a minute is just a good baseline to have our heart rate down a little bit, but not to have us like totally chilled out, lazing on the couch. So interest set rest is really just supposed to get your heart rate back down to a manageable level so you can perform really well on the next set, but you still wanna stay warm. You wanna keep those muscles warm. Um, you don't wanna take yourself out of the workout entirely. So for light exercises like this, generally a minute is enough, but if you're doing like really, really heavy squats, sometimes I rest even up to five minutes. Depends on the exercise. All right, we're gonna get started in five seconds. So get set. And let's go. So again, for this, I'm really just focused on keeping those hips as solid as I possibly can. Of course, they're gonna move a little bit, but we're not going for perfection. Just as good as we can get it. I can definitely feel those obliques engaging. And you can tell I'm not going super quick here. We don't need to be going speeding through this. You just wanna go slow and controlled. And that'll about do it. So we're gonna do one last set. I know that will put us a little bit over time. So if you wanna sign off now, that's totally fine. But. I'm gonna finish this workout out with our last and third set, our final set of the day. So I did talk to you guys a little bit about how your core is responsible for basically stabilizing you throughout all of your life. Um, one really cool thing to note, I think, is that when you get into barbell lifting, one cue that 
coaches will tell you a lot of the times is to make your stomach feel like you're about to get punched, right? So if I told you if someone's about to punch you in the gut, you'd probably tense your stomach really hard, right? That's basically the stable position that you want to have when you're squatting or deadlifting, because that basically makes it harder for the weight to compress you. Like almost, if you can imagine a soda can full of air and an empty soda can, the empty soda can is a lot easier to crush. Your body is the same way, right? So training the core can be a really great way to learn how to tense up that stomach the way we want to for really stable and safe lifting. All right, we're gonna get ready for our last set here and let's get it. I'll just go 30 seconds here in the interest of not keeping you guys here forever, but if you wanna go to full 45 and push yourself, be my guest. But for the rest of you, we got about 10 seconds left. Finish strong, last set, best set. In three, two, one. Whew. All right, great job, you guys. I'm sweaty, I'm tired, hopefully you guys are too. And hopefully this showed you that you can totally get a great um, workout in with no equipment whatsoever or with very minimal equipment. If you guys enjoyed this type of live event, be sure to let me know in the chat. Um, I'd love to do more live workouts with you guys in the future. Um, and other than that, if you liked this workout, be sure to check out my paths on track. Um, I have a lot of really cool paths relating to the body and one on the science of building muscle. So if what I talked about in this workout interested you, be sure to check that out. And other than that, great job. I'm really proud of you. It was fun getting strong together. And I think that is all from my end. So I'll be signing off. See you guys. And thank you so much for joining me again.